Please join me for the call of worship. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. Let us join in singing our processional hymn, hymn 606. Come, let us use the grace divine. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that you have allowed us to come. And we pray, Father, that you would be among us, be in our midst. We ask that you speak to our hearts, to our minds. We ask, God, that you would enlighten us. We ask, dear Lord, that you would empower us to be your witnesses. We ask, God, that you would fill us with your spirit, that we may walk in your love, your grace, in your peace. We thank you, God, for being in our midst. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us now stand and welcome one another.
I'd like to invite you to take the, uh, the red pad on the end of the pew and sign them. Uh, register your attendance here uh, this morning. And at this time, we're going to invite all our young people to come to the front, to the altar rail, for children's time. Thank you. Okay, children's time. So now I have a question. Uh, do you guys sometimes pray? Sometimes? You do? Okay, you guys? Do you sometimes pray? Okay. Once my dad prayed to get me feel better when I was sick. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so we've heard about prayer, right? Praying. Yes. So, okay, so now the next, next question I have. Oh, there, there she comes. <clears throat> All right. Glad to have you. <clears throat> Let's make some room here. Okay, so I asked the question, do you guys sometimes pray? You do? Great. So, what kinds of prayers do you pray? Um, my grandma prays for rosary. Really? Well, what about you? What kind of prayers do you pray? I pray um, that, um, that everyone loved God. Oh, nice. That is wonderful. Pray that everyone loves God. That's an excellent prayer. I love that type of prayer. What about you guys? Do you sometimes, do you, yeah? What kinds of prayers do you pray? Pray for my great-great-grandma, Regina, and my great-great-grandpa, Bertrand. Oh, nice. And you pray for your great-grandmother and grandpa? Yes. You guys? Yeah? Anyone else? Things you pray about? What kinds of things do you pray about? What about, uh, do you say grace at mealtime? Yeah? Once um, I said a prayer, Merry Christmas, to my grandpa who died. My grandpa went more. Okay, and so to, uh, prayer is, is important even when we are sad, and we can go to God <clears throat> and pray and ask God's comfort, right, and peace. Okay. Um, let's see. Is there anyone here brave enough? 
to pray a prayer for us this morning? Would you like to say a prayer? Okay, well, let's, let's do both of you. You want to use the mic? Okay. Thank you, God, for, um, for helping us and believing in you. Amen. Did you want to say a prayer? Okay. Dear Jesus, please help um, everybody to listen to God. Jesus name, me, me. Amen. Anyone else? Okay, let me offer a prayer and then we would have our time. You want to say a prayer for us? <laughs> okay. All right, let us pray. Father, we are so grateful for the little ones um, who even teach us how to preach, uh, pray. And Father, we pray that you will continue to bless our little ones and all of us. Continue to teach us how to pray, how to speak to you. We thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I'm doing a mission minute this morning. So I'm talking about WAMBA, which we all know stands for Watertown Urban Mission Basket Award. And we have a gorgeous wheelbarrow. I mean, a really nice wheelbarrow back there. We have to fill up with gardening stuff. So if you're like me, you've got about 20, 20 catalogs already. And uh, if you order seeds, just order a few extra for the, for the wheelbarrow or um, Stratton has all kinds of stuff, ice, you know, implements, and uh, uh, anything you can think of that has to do with gardening. And um, it's a major fundraiser for the Urban Mission. They raised over 14000 last year. And uh, our deadline is Easter, so we want to have it filled up by Easter. We have to catalog it all and then submit it for our, uh, our award, we hope. We can get a trophy and, or, and a plaque. And the auction will be at St. Anthony's uh, later on in April. And anybody can bid on really great items. So let's all get growing.
Our first scripture reading this morning comes from the New uh, Testament epistle of James, the fifth chapter, verses 13 through 16. Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please join me for the responsive reading found in your hymnal, page 832. We will read Psalm 111, verses 1 through 5. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who have pleasure in them. Full of honor and majesty are the works of the Lord, whose righteousness endures forever. Who has caused his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. The Lord provides food for the Our next scripture reading comes from the New Testament Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter, verses 1 through 8 and 16 through 18. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not let them be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father, who is unseen. 
and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And our next hymn this morning is number 496 in your hymnal, Sweet Hour of Prayer, number 496. The Old Testament reading is found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 58. We will read verses 1 through 10. And if you wish to read along, you'll find us in the Pew Bible on page 867. It's the Old Testament book of Isaiah. Shout aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and to the descendants of Jacob their sins. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen, only a day for people to humble themselves 
Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is it not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter, when you see the naked, to clothe him, and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry out for help, and he will say, here I am. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing of finger and malicious talk, and if you spend yourselves in behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will become like the noonday. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God gave word to the prophet Isaiah to inform his people <laughs> of the current condition of their community. There were criticism or criti critical issues that needed addressing. The society was in a state of moral decay, as we have heard from the reading of Isaiah. And it was a terrible time for this community of people because Corruption pervaded the entire community. And because of this moral decay that was beginning to spread throughout the community, it weakened the nation of Israel. It weakened the nation of the Hebrews. It weakened um, the Hebrew people and their relationship with God. And in reading this text, it reminds me, even yet today, that we find ourselves in a condition where moral decay seemed to invade our world. Not only just within our nation, but we are talking in a global sense, the entire world. And we understand the human nature, it is that we have fallen short of the grace of God. And certainly we do need God. But as we examine this text, as we take a brief look at what happened to these people, what was going on that we had within a community of people injustices oppressions, a yoke that was unbearable for people to bear in their life in terms of lifestyles, in terms of perhaps their relations with their neighbors, people who were hungry, poor, homeless, naked, without any support, what happened to this covenant nation of God? And I think that if we take a closer look at this text in Isaiah, that we can begin to understand what was going on. What happened? Because these people, the Hebrew people, they were considered people of God. They were recognized 
In fact, they wrote a whole Bible about their relationship with God, about this covenant they established with God. That if they were faithful to their God, and in keeping the commandments, in abiding by the principles and the precepts of God, that these people would be a blessed people, that they would be blessed by God. And that there would be, there would be no issues, there would be no problems. But clearly, among this nation, there were problems, there were issues. There were corruptions. Things were happening, malicious talks against one another. And a kind of broken relationship within the community of people. They were not getting along. And perhaps there were uh, some disparities bec uh, between the rich and the poor. And perhaps the rich kept on getting richer and then the poor continued to get poorer. And there was poverty. Yet under a nation which has committed itself to honoring and serving and keeping God's word. What was wrong? And certainly, as we read this text, we can see God called Isaiah and he spoke to Isaiah to speak to his people. So <clears throat> first, I think uh, we should regard the reading then not as words spoken from Isaiah, but these words that I just read in your hearing were words spoken by God to his people in stating the problem. Why is it that we cannot prosper? Why is it that it seems that we cannot have peace within our nation? What is wrong? And so, as prophet of God, Isaiah spoke on God's behalf to inform the people what the problem was and that there would need to be a response from the people in addressing the issues, the issues that were happening. And so God says to him, shout aloud, do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people. Declare to my people. Their rebellion and to the descendants of, to the descendants of Jacob their sins. Their rebellion and their sins. We are entering into the season of Lent. And Isaiah is perhaps one of the most favorite readings during this time because it is a time of reflection. It is a time of self-examination. It is a time of looking at what is happening within me. As I spoke about last Sunday, uh, this is not the time where we are looking at everybody else's faults and wrongs and errors and problems and we can't see ourselves from seeing everybody else's issues. This is the time where we examine what is happening at home, what is happening with me as an individual. What is my relationship like with God? What is my relationship, what is my current relationship at this time with my brothers and sisters in Christ? It is a time of examining our hearts 
and our thinking and our attitudes, our motives. And to know whether or not we are in conformity with the way God expects and wants us to live. God has expectations for his people. And he expects that we would love one another. That is God's expectation. And as people of God, even as these people who had these issues that, are, that were erupting throughout the communities, causing issues within the community, we need to step back and examine closely the actions and the attitudes that we present with our brothers and sisters in Christ and with God. So Lent is, is all about self-examination, re-evaluating our relationship with God and with one another. And if there is a broken relationship that has been established between you and myself, and we recognize that there is something broken between us, then what God expects is that we come together and we address the issue. He expects that we would forgive one another. He expects that we would repent, that we would change our ways, even as God expected these people to change their ways because they were hurting one another. They were doing harmful things, malicious things against one another. So this is a serious occasion. Lent is a serious occasion. This is a time when we come face to face with, with our immortality. Hence, we have Ash Wednesday, which comes, and we put the ash on the forehead to recognize that we, are, that we are only but dust, that we are only ashes, and that one day we will pass from this earth and we will go back to the dust of the ground. So Ash Wednesday, Lent seasons bring us back into the reality of our state of being. The condition that we have. Certainly I do not mean for this to be a depressing sermon. <laughs> But sometimes we do need to speak in these terms to remind ourselves who we are in God's presence. And that we certainly have a dependency on God, all of us. We have an, a dependency on God. That we certainly cannot live this life without God because he is the source of all life. And if we think that we can sustain ourselves apart from God, then I think that we are fooling ourselves, that we are deceiving ourselves. Yes, this is a time where we are called to pray and to Practice self-denial, self-denial. In our Christian calendar, um, they actually use this title that I have for the sermon title this morning, A Call to Prayer and Self-Denial. So the conference, the, the Methodist Church, we recognize the importance of this occasion. And prayer is a vital, is a vital spiritual practice that we all must have because this is what brings us into relationship with God. And I'd like to talk 
some about that this morning. There are at least two things that are required in learning how to pray. There are two things, at least two things that are required in learning how to pray. Study and practice. One of the most helpful things that has helped me in my prayer life in understanding prayer is going to the Bible and reading various scriptures that relates to prayer. And I would say that I spent much time in reading the Psalms. Psalms, the Psalms taught me how to pray in reading Psalms. What I've, I've learned, of course, what we say the Lord's Prayer, and I learned that very early, you know. Uh, I grew up in the in a Methodist church, and uh, perhaps I think I've learned it. I've learned it at such a young age. I've learned it first from my mother, you know, maybe age five or six. You know, you learn the Lord's Prayer, and I think just about every person in here have learned that prayer, and we can just we can just recite it without any any problems. But the most helpful thing that I've, that I've experienced that has helped me in understanding how to approach God, how to talk to God, was from reading the scriptures. Not only the Psalms, but in other parts. There are many uh, characters in the Bible, which uh, prayers which have been written out, that actually shows us how to approach God, how to pray about various kinds of things. Did you know that there are, several, there are several ways to pray to God? There are several ways that we can approach God? It is the most important thing that we have in terms of our relationship with God is to pray. If we want to influence this community, if we want to be an influence within this church, it starts with the exposure of understanding how to pray to God. How to pray. Sadly, we learn from the text this morning that these people did attempt to approach God. But if you read that again, if you read this text again from Isaiah, you realize that they were approaching God in the wrong ways. They had the wrong motives. They were fasting and praying somehow to, have, to seek advantage over one another. And at and the truth of the matter is that God does not answer all prayers, especially the kind of prayer that seeks to do injury to another person. God does not answer every prayer. Therefore, we need to understand, well then, what do we say to God in prayer? You know, and children, sometimes they can be the best. Sometimes we can learn from young people. But I had Olivia to, to pray for us. And you know what you pray and ask about God love. Ask about God teaching us how to love and to love. It's almost like a natural instinct. So... Study and practice. One of the things that I, as the pastor, as your pastor, would encourage all of us to engage in for this Lenten season is, is to engage this learning about prayer, understanding what this prayer is all about. 
It is yet very simple. It's a very simple practice, but yet complicated. <laughs> it is very simple to do, but yet complicated. It can be complicated. Because prayer and engaging God has many levels. And we have learned that from scriptures. Even though it is a very simple practice, but it will change our lives, believe me, if we truly want to see change within this church, it begins with talking with God. We can look to ourselves and believe that we are self-sufficient, but to tell you the truth, any real change, we must go to God and ask for God's guidance, to ask for God's direction. Isaiah eventually tells the people, or at least God tells his people, how to do it. How do we, how do we get God to hear us? How do we get answers for the problems and the issues that we are faced with? Read Isaiah 58. I, I would say just read it throughout this time of Lent, throughout the Lenten season. I would like to encourage all of us as we as we enter Lenten season in February, uh, we will be offering a uh, study in prayer. And I say we, but Ashley, um, I spoke with Jane, who was with us this morning as our liturgist, and I asked her would she be willing to, to teach on the subject of prayer and uh, to help us understand, you know, how to begin with the basics. And I believe that this is where we need to begin in terms of realizing what, it, what is the most valuable thing for us to do in life. It probably is talking with God. And so she has agreed to do this, and I have agreed to do what I can to encourage us all to participate in this, uh, in this study. And, and also, not only do we have uh, um, the, uh, the Bible study series that she will be starting in February, but also uh, I've asked Lindsay Webb, would she also do a study regarding the passion of Jesus Christ? And so we have these studies that will, that will be offered to us. And it is an opportunity for us to, to, to begin to move into a different level with God and into a different level with one another. Because Isaiah, once again, has given us the answer. That it is having the right heart, and the right mind, and the right understanding of what God expects. He wants us to walk in love. He wants us to care for one another. He wants us to reach out to those who are in need, to respond in a way that honors him. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this opportunity to to speak to us, and we ask God that you will help us to grow and to understand the importance of prayer, the importance of what it means to, to live out a life that honors you, to, look, to take a deep look at ourselves and to examine our hearts and to understand our relationship with our brothers and sisters and what adjustments we need to make. We thank you, dear God, for this opportunity to serve and to honor you in prayer and in fasting. In Christ's name, amen.
at this time going to invite us um, in singing our response to the word. And I think that it speaks uh, to individuals because it's about taking ownership of the fact that we all should be responsible for our prayer life. And so we'll sing hymn 352, uh, verses 1 through 3, Standing in the Need of Prayer. this time we're going to extend the time of joys and prayer concerns and the ushers will come uh, with the mic anyone who wishes to to share a joy or concern okay Wilbert, can I get one hopefully between this microphone and that one you can hear me all right um, joy is okay. too many birthdays John does was yesterday my best friend Dan's is tomorrow, and my younger son is Tuesday. And I like to bake, so I'm kind of busy. <laughs> <laughs> and the concern is for Jayla, our little four-year-old granddaughter. She came down with something Friday night. She's been fevered off and on all through the night, so Dan is home with her. So I'd like prayers for her. I have a concern. I've recently come to a fork in my journey, and I only Can't hope to pray. Turn it on. Hold it, hold it like Hello? this. I've come to a fork in my journey, and I only hope that it, by taking the path left, less traveled, that I've made the right choice. So I'd like prayers for my journey ahead, and that I have made the right choice. <clears throat> I'd like prayers for my daughter, uh, Sharon, who's got pneumonia, and prayers for healings. It'll be the second time in a year she got pneumonia in Nepal, and she got pneumonia recently. So I also want to pray prayers for Ori, who has not been well. Thank you. Last week I had mentioned that my friend was discharged from the hospital to a rehab facility near her home. Well, she acquired another infection, a different strain, so she's in the hospital again and asked for continued prayers.
Okay. Okay, any other concerns? Well, I have a joy. Um, my daughter is with me, um, and uh, she's going to be with us for some time, perhaps. Maybe a short time, but uh, we are grateful to have her with us. And uh, just very happy. And I think some of you may have already met her. And so, amen. <laughs> Okay. All right, so are there any other? Let us pray. Father, we are grateful this morning for this time of service, and we thank you for the privilege of prayer and to present our concerns to you, and we ask, oh God, that you would hear each person's concern this morning. Uh, we pray for Jayla. We ask, O oh God, that you be with her and strengthen her body and give her peace, comfort her, O oh Lord, and give her the energy that she needs, O oh God, as a child. And also we pray for Nick, that you would give him wisdom and guidance and direction for his life. And we pray that he would make the right decisions, O oh God, that will honor you. We continue to pray for Ori, um, who is home, and ask that you would renew his body and strength, that he may continue to serve you here. And also, Miyako's friend, we ask that you would be with her as she undergoes another uh, medical treatment. We thank you, God, for loving us all. As we pray the Lord's Prayer, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, uh, the ushers will come to receive the offering. Let us prepare our hearts and minds.
We thank you, Lord, for blessing us. And now we give to you. We ask that you bless this offering and let it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us here. Now prepare us as we leave. Go with us, guide us, lead us, strengthen us, O oh God, that we may continue to serve you by word and deed. In Christ's name, amen. Thank you, Lisa. God has brought us here. God now sends us forth. Thanks be to God. You may go in peace.
This has been a broadcast of the 1015 service Sunday morning from Asbury United Methodist Church located on Franklin Street in Watertown. Asbury United Methodist Church.